Red Square, the May Day Parade, 1962. This is the first time that the Soviet Union has publicly displayed weapons classified in Gold July Ujo. Here they are. These are live servitors under transient control. The vehicles towing them bear the insignia of the Second Guards Engineering Brigade, a penal construction unit based in Bukhara and used for structural engineering assignments relating to nuclear installations in the Ukraine and Azerbaijan. This is the first time that any Dresden Agreement party openly demonstrated ownership of this technology. In this instance, the conclusion we are intended to draw is that the 67th Guard Engineering Brigade operates four units. Given the existing figures for the Soviet Orbat, we can then extrapolate a total task strength of 288 servitors, if this unit is unexceptional. This conclusion is questionable. For example, in 1964, total of 240 bear bomber passes were made over the reviewing stand in front of the Lenin Mausoleum. However, at that time, technical reconnaissance assets verified that the Soviet Air Force was hard stand parking for only 160 of these aircraft. And estimates of airframe production based on photographs of the extent of the Tupolev Bureau's works indicate that total production to that date was between 60 and 180 bombers. Further analysis of photographic evidence from the 1964 parade suggests that a single group of 20 aircraft in four formations of five made repeated passes through the same airspace, the main arc of their circuit lying outside of visual observation range of Moscow. This gave rise to the erroneous capacity report of 1964, in which the first strike delivery capability of the Soviet Union was overestimated by as much as 300%. We must therefore take anything that they show us in Red Square with a pinch of salt when preparing force estimates. Quite possibly, these four servitors are all they've got. Then again, the actual battalion strength may be considerably higher. These images were taken very recently on successive orbital passes of a KH-11 satellite. They were timed precisely 89 minutes apart. This village was the home of a noted Mujahideen leader. Note the similar footprint to the payloads on the load beds of the trucks seen at the 1962 parade. These indicators were present, denoting the presence of servitor units in use by Soviet forces in Afghanistan. The four meter wide gauge of the assimilation track, the total molecular breakdown of organic matter in the track, the speed of destruction. The event took less than 5,000 seconds to completion. No survivors were visible, and a causative agent had already been uplifted by the time of the second orbital pass. This, despite the residents of the community being armed with Dishka heavy machine guns, rocket-propelled grenade launchers, and AK-47s. Lastly, there is no sign of the causative agent even deviating from its course, but the entire area is depopulated. Except for excarnated residue, there is no sign of human habitation. In the presence of such unique indicators, we have no alternative but to conclude that the Soviet Union has violated the Dresden Agreement by deploying Gold July Buja in a combat mode in the Khyber Pass. There are no grounds to believe that a NATO armored division would have fared any better than these Mujahideen without nuclear support.